All right, hey, what's going on everyone? Coach Kyle here with Kenny Dry Training. In today's video, we're gonna go over the science behind how to actually build some lean muscle tissue, kind of what that looks like, um, how muscles recover, how they heal, how they grow, uh, where nutrition plays a role, and how you can take some of this information and then apply it to your training to hopefully put on a little bit of more lean muscle tissue. Some individuals, you know, kind of diving right into it, some individuals uh, have a harder time putting on a little bit of muscle mass, um, and then some individuals have a really easy time. Uh, genetics definitely play a, a pretty vital factor in, you know, kind of how your muscles recover, how quickly um, they, they want to grow, how rapidly you absorb nutrition. And there's all sorts of variables that come into play. Um, however, we can adapt, um, especially on the nutrition side and the strength training side, uh, in order to basically fuel, uh, recover, heal, and then grow. As a lot of you know, there's numerous benefits behind building some lean muscle mass, some lean muscle tissue, such as like, um, you know, increased metabolic rate, uh, lower body fat percentage, um, you know, feeling stronger, uh, hormone production is higher, we feel just happier overall. So kind of jumping right into it, we're gonna be talking a little bit about the physiology behind muscle growth. So let's say you're in the gym and you work like, I don't know, like a push-pull day. Um, after your workout, your body begins to repair some of these damaged muscles. So when you're exercising and you're putting the muscles through contraction, they become damaged, the muscle fibers, through um, basically uh, just, just small tears, right? Through the eccentric and concentric motion of the repetitions. And then you apply that hundreds of times throughout an actual workout set. Um, a lot of those fibers, uh, you know, they're damaged and then we start the healing process, which is where the actual muscle growth is going to happen. So when the, the, the muscle cells want to heal, um, damaged muscle fibers, they go through a cellular process where they kind of fuse together and then they form new protein strands. Um, this is basically called protein synthesis. Uh, this this occurs pretty much um, at various rates. So some individuals, uh, you know, have an increased protein synthesis rate, um, and then others uh, have a slower. So when you actually exercise, you're not growing the muscle at that point. The, the muscle growth happens within 24 to 48 hours after. So when, you know, we exercise and we train, we want to flush blood into the muscle target. Um, and then that's going to be one of our mechanisms that actually make the muscle grow. Um, so overall, we want to activate uh, that muscular hypertrophy um, and that protein synthesis uh, for the target of the workout. So kind of, you know, um, moving on, there's three different mechanisms that we want to, you know, that actually take um, a muscle to grow. And then, uh, you know, your your fitness level is definitely going to be a factor on kind of how you train. So if we're less fit, um, we need to build up a little bit of muscular stamina and, um, you know, muscular endurance in order to uh, increase our, our overall fitness level and our fitness trend uh, so we can, you know, continue to train harder and then grow those muscles and, you know, uh, continue to adapt them. So the number one um, kind of mechanism is going to be what's called muscle tension. So you basically what that means is you need to apply tension or a load of stress um, to the muscle, right? So we need to put the muscles under a little bit of tension, which is pretty uh, obvious is what we're trying to do in the gym. And then the mechanism number two is going to be muscle damaged. So we need to localize or target um, in order to cause like an in inflammatory effect. Um, and and th what that's gonna do is activate what's called satellite cells um, that jump into action to start to try to heal and recover and grow the muscles. Um, this is, <sighs> again in that kind of recovery window so generally when i'm training a client um what i'll mention is it takes anywhere from 24 to like 72 hours for that muscle to completely heal recover and grow and then we want to train it again like four to five days later 
So depending upon what your goal is, right? So what you're training for, if we're training for, you know, lean muscle tissue growth, we need to properly structure our, our workout regimen on a weekly basis. And this is where kind of splits come in. So you need to look at your, your like work family life, and then you need to come up with a split. And again, this is what I do. This is where I, you know, kind of sit down with a client and we'll talk about workout efficiency. Um, but we need to come up with a split that's going to suit them best uh, on the days we're allotted to work out where we can kind of maximize what we're talking about, which is, you know, muscular hypertrophy and muscle growth. And then the, the number th the last, the third mechanism is going to be what's called metabolic stress. So if you've ever felt like a pump or, you know, where you can't unfold your arms because like your, your biceps are contracted too much, then you have felt the effects of metabolic stress. So, um, Metabolic stress is basically swelling, uh, which happens with the muscle, uh, and then that definitely contributes to muscle growth, uh, increasing the size of our muscle cells. So this, with the addition of what's called mu muscle glycogen, um, <clears throat> will help kind of swell the, the, the muscle tissue and then lead to connective tissue growth. Um, yeah, so I don't want to dive too much in and, you know, kind of read a bunch of textbook definitions, but those are the three main mechanisms. Um, and then we want to talk a, a little bit about like, uh, uh, like hormones and stuff like that. This is where, um, men, you know, typically have, uh, the predominant hormone of testosterone. Women do have testosterone. Um, however, it's uh, typically not as high levels as men. So with, uh, testosterone, that is our main hormone that, um, basically increases our protein synthesis uh, and it inhibits uh, protein breakdowns. Uh, it activates those satellite cells um, and then it stimulates other anabolic hormones in our body. So it's not readily available um, for both men or women. So this is where individuals decide to supplement to try to uh, enhance our our protein synthesis production and uh, you know kind of get that muscle growth a little bit more rapidly. There's plenty of different natural ways to increase our testosterone production. And then I'll put like a list right here um, that you can screenshot and then you know on your phone or your computer and then uh, maybe refer back to it. So the the natural ways to increase our our uh, testosterone levels and that's going to be things like you know like red meat. Once or twice a week, um, increase protein consumption, uh, you know, uh, multivitamin, vitamin D, zinc, magnesium, um, and then, you know, adequate sleep, plenty of rest and stuff like that. Um, so again, I'll put that list up and then, uh, hopefully you guys can refer back to it later. Um, but yeah, so, so the main thing, uh, with, you know, what I've learned a lot with the, with the science behind, uh, you know, muscular growth is it's that recovery window. So it's that, uh, again, st structured and proper training regimens, and then making sure we allot our bodies uh, anywhere from, you know, I like that 72 hour mark to let a muscle completely heal and grow. So if I train like, I don't know, chest and shoulders on Monday, um, I'm going to avoid trying to uh, tear any more of those those muscle fibers within my chest and shoulders. Um, within the next 72 hours. So what I'll do is I'll do it on Monday and then I'll start thinking about it, doing it again on like Friday or Saturday. So again, the science behind it, we have those three main mechanisms. And then one of the, the most important, if not the most important aspect is gonna be that, that rest and recovery, uh, you know, kind of window. So this is where our nutrition uh, is absolutely paramount in order for our muscles to heal, recover and grow. So now we're talking about things like uh, our macronutrients, which I've gone over in you know this video right here. I'll see if I can get the link to go right there. Um, but yeah, so talking about our macronutrients, we have our carbs and our fats and our proteins. So if we're talking about protein synthesis and muscular hypertrophy, we must be uh, you know increasing our overall grams of protein. Um, that macronutrient that's the main one that's gonna you know uh, allow our muscles to absorb. Um, what we what we feed them and then uh, you know kind of grow stronger become leaner and then you know kind of reap all those benefits of an increased lean muscle mass right which is like a faster metabolic rate um, overall strength um, decreased body fat percentage stuff like that so again in order for a muscle to grow and right and how muscles need the growth is they occur um, when you adapt by creating stress that our body's previous threshold uh, has already adapted to. So this is what we're called like a progressive load or progressive tension. Um, so continuing to lift weights 
uh, in, in a proper, you know, structured training format is going to ideally, you know, make you a little bit leaner, a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, a little bit faster. And again, we're specifically talking about muscle growth here. If we're talking about cardiovascular stamina, 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 we're in a kind of a whole different realm. Um, so, in, you know, with cardiovascular stamina, now we're uh, predominantly trying to consume carbohydrates and then store them as, you know, basically gas in our tanks uh, in order to increase our, um, you know, our, our stamina uh, and the way our heart acts as a pump and then, you know, continue to progress in that sense. But right now we're talking specifically about muscle growth. Um, so, yeah, use those three mechanisms to your advantage. I can't not stress how important um, our nutrition and our protein consumption is going to be. So a proper uh, structured training regimen along with, uh, you know, you know, clean, uh, you know, nice nutrition adaptations uh, and, you know, uh, making sure that when we're inside of the, the gym doing our workouts that we're allowing ourselves the, what I like is that pretty much 12 to 20 on the repetition range. And then, you know, uh, making sure that we're doing, performing the, the exercise properly, getting those satellite cells activated, and then, um, you know, allowing those muscles to heal, recover, grow, become stronger, faster, leaner. So I hope some of this information helps. Um, you can always, again, reach out to me if you have any questions and then, you know, go train hard, use the science behind muscle growth to your advantage and, you know, use data to progress physically and go train hard.